Gracious Father, as we come before you, we ask that you enlighten our hearts and minds once again with the blessing of your spirit. Guide us according to your will. And truly lead us so that we in turn can touch the lives of others. We thank you, dear Lord, that you have come here to our presence to uplift and bless and strengthen us. And we ask that you truly enrich us as we look to you this day and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. 
the second Kings, the second chapter begins with verse 1. Throughout the Old Testament, our Lord gives us remarkable glimpses of what His grace accomplishes and what it is that He desires to take place. Today we have two individuals, Elijah and Elisha, both that are given to us so that we understand how God guided them with His Spirit to accomplish a purpose for a people who were anything but cooperative. God's determination is something that is remarkable. And what he enabled these men to accomplish on his behalf were remarkable as well. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel, and the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you, before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing, yet, it shall, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire, and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. The epistle lesson is found in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. It begins with verse 12. Paul explains to us the central purpose of the gospel and how God has given it to us so that we will be taken from ignorance to wisdom. There's only one way for we who are sinful human beings to be given this remarkable insight of our God. It is through the Spirit and the Word that opens up our minds and our hearts to the, the message of the Gospel. And so Paul reiterates over and over again, the remarkable, the, the remarkable position that we all hold in this sinful world. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our, our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world was blinded by the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, 
who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Would you please rise? The Holy Gospel for this morning is found in the ninth chapter of St. Mark. It begins with verse 2. There is no greater insight that we are given except through these gospel lessons about the remarkable presence of God in the midst of his people. This is an amazing text. The transfiguration just points us to so many realities about how our God brought his divinity into the lives of his people. And yet, because we are sinful and our minds are not that sharp, we miss so much. And this text shows us the length that God goes to to open up our minds and hearts and to grant us a remarkable wisdom that comes from him. We are told in this way. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Here is the Holy Gospel. Would you please join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 191. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten of man, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was for us and Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have to win. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, proceeds to the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge with baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world.
what it is that he desires to take place in our hearts. What he desires for us to understand and grasp. And to give us a promise of what he has done for each of us at this little moment. The Transfiguration was a time when the Lord chose a very specific way to touch his disciples. It was unique. First of all, he brought two men who had died long, long ago back into their presence. Moses and Elijah. These men represented the law and repentance. And the wondrous gift of what God accomplished through them to save his people, to redeem his people. Elijah, he gave the ability to raise people from the dead, to be sustained with food when there was none, to be one whose word was powerful and changed the hearts and the lives of others, who could stand before 400 Baal worshipers and Baal priests, and God sent a bolt of lightning down to demonstrate to everyone around he was alive and powerful. Our Lord, he was transfigured in order to touch the disciples with seeing a little piece of what it's like to be divine. We see the effect that it had on these three disciples, Peter, James, and John. We are told by the scripture that it made them terrified. And the Greek makes it very clear that they were out of control in how they were thinking. That's why Peter says, let us build three tents. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. That's a good thing to talk about. Tents. The description of the divinity, this glory that Christ showed, is described this way, even inspired by the Holy Spirit, showing the limited ability of man it was wider than any man could bleach clothes. That's not a great description of the glory of God. It's the best we could do. Because we have minds that are ignorant. That are not in any comparison with the mind of God. The Lord came to transform us. To change our ignorance to wisdom. I am so thankful I was raised by a father who taught me a lot of things. And one of the things he taught me was, ignorance is not an insult. It's a description. It means a lack of knowledge. We, in our knowledge of God, are here until he opens our mind through the spirit to grasp the truth and the wonder of what he has done. So our God has chosen a means. It's called his means of grace. His method, his way, his decision about how to open up our eyes and our hearts and to transform our souls so that we can grasp a hold of the wondrous truths of our God. So that we can stand before this world with a peace and a joy and a remarkable presence that God gives us in this world. I love the discussions we had around my, my father's supper table because dad would talk to us about nuclear physics and biology and chemistry and he would talk to us about ozone holes and uh, the molecular structure of different kind of normal common table things we had around. And my dad did it in such a way that he always reinforced the fact that everything we discussed reinforced the truth of what God taught and how God was the creator of all things. When I went to the seminary, I had a professor, his name was Dr. Bells. I love Dr. Bells. He was just such a good man, and he was my soccer coach at the seminary as well. And when I was in his Greek reading class, this, this is the purpose of the class. You sat in the class, and you would read the Greek, and then you would have to explain to the rest of the people in the room what it really meant. Well, Dr. Bells always gave me that well, horse fire, it's your time, and I know you don't know anything, so do the best you can, look. And he said, translate this, horse fire. 32 Greek words in this verse. I knew 20 of the words. 
He goes, okay, horse buyer, what does it say? And I told him. And Dr. Bells put his elbow on the podium, took off his glasses, looked at me and said, how do you know that? He said, you're not smart enough to know that. I said, my father taught me. He goes, oh, so is, is your dad a professor? I said, no, he's, he's a principal of a high school. A Lutheran high school. No, a public high school. He said, so how did he learn this? I said, because my dad's really smart. My dad was. I was in the seminary with really bright people, and I grew up with my brothers being really bright. I was not in that category. But there was one thing that God gave me. I understand grace and how it's applied in the scriptures. It's one thing God has given me. It isn't about how wise you are. It is about what God reveals. So when I read in my Greek classes, I could tell them what the verses said. I always understood what they said because my dad taught me this principle. Everything in the scripture has to agree with the teaching of the cross. If it doesn't agree with the teaching of the cross, you're not looking at the passage correctly. And that little piece of advice that my father gave me has made it so that I can look at a scripture and see the grace of it and how the law is applied to give us a clear vision of the grace. And it's that gift that my dad gave me. It wasn't my gift. It was his gift to me. We were given the transfiguration to understand that we are transformed. We are given a mind and a heart that can receive the truths of God in grace. Law is easy. Law just brings burden and tells people to walk a certain way. But grace shows us the wonder of the love of our God. Grace is always described as undeserved love in the scripture. It is a love given to us, not because we've earned it, we've deserved it, or we've had even asked for it. He grants it to us because he desires to. And so in my life, God has been very gracious to me in showing me how many things I will never understand intellectually. But I understand something spiritual. We have a Lord and we have a Savior who died and rose. And He is ours. He gives us glimpses all the time of His divine needs. He has chosen His methods to bring his wonders, love, and mercy into our lives. There is nothing that thrills me more than a baptismal body. Because it is the pure proclamation of our God, of bringing divinity into the lives of we who are sinners, and granting us this remarkable blessing of being touched by his spirit so that we understand what we cannot understand on our own. And he does it because he rejoices in who we are. We are Christians. We have this privilege. We can look at one another and understand we are saved. We have been touched by the Spirit, and we can rejoice at the wonder of what it is. And it's why I want you to emphasize in your families, in yourselves, for the next six weeks, the wonder of what those words mean. What our God has done for you. What he's done for us. I love the transfiguration because it is such an amazing example of how deeply our Lord desires to grant wisdom into our lives. And he has given us a spirit so that that wisdom is something we can grasp and hold up and share, especially with each other. We are blessed. I love that I was told we are transfiguring. It is the gift. We know that we have been changed. 
we have been given a heart, a faith. And we have been given a life that will last forever in the wonder of his love. It is an amazing gift to be a believer. It is an amazing thing to understand what our God has granted. May he help us to always hold on to that truth. And may we grow our ability to share it freely with each other. May he grant it to us all. Amen. Would you please rise? Now may the peace of God which passes us all understanding. May you keep your hearts and minds into Christ Jesus.
So we place them into your hands, dear Lord, and trust in all that you will do. For Zach, we, we thank you for the progress that you have enabled him to make, for the strength that you have given to him and all that you have carried him through so far. And we place them into your hands and trust in the goodness that you will continue to grant him. For Katie, we ask that you would be with her, dear Lord, that you would provide your healing power, grant her strength beyond her own, help the doctors grant them wisdom, help guide all things according to your will, and lead her one day back to health. For Melvin, we place him into your hands, dear Lord, and we thank you for the progress that you continue to enable him to have each day. For Mel, we ask that you would be with him, easing his fear and granting him wisdom upon him and the doctors and truly providing him health and strength. For Jane Ann, we ask, Lord, that you would be with her, that you would continue to lift her up each day, granting her a healing and a strength, giving wisdom to the doctors and providing the best method to remove the cancer. For Megan, we ask that you would continue to hold her close to your dear Lord and carry her forward. And for Tom, that you would carry him through all the difficulties he is facing and truly providing your health and strength. And as always, dear Lord, we bring before you our fellow believers in this world who are enduring such persecution because of their trust in you. May you lift them up. May you grant to them a strength beyond their own. May your spirit grant to them the words that they are needing to speak. And may their witness always truly be effective and remain strong and true for you. And you know, dear Lord, as we bring before you our military men and women, we seek that you would guide and bless them holding them close to you, enabling them to carry out what you desire for them to accomplish, and truly keep them ever close to you. And as we people, dear Lord, this day, we once again turn to you in the prayer that your Son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it to all of you. This is a new testament in my blood, which has been shed for you for the remission of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. May the peace of our Lord be with you always.
preserve you and keep you in the one true faith until the end of the last day. Depart now in the peace of me, so freely given to you. Amen. <coughs>
We continue with the call up on page 201. Let us pray. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us with this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you will strengthen us with the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant to you his eternal peace.